When was the last time you saw Christopher Hitchens? Uh, it was a few years ago when we debated in Berkeley. And how would you characterize that encounter? Uh, it was like debating someone on Fox News. Um, I don't want to take away from his brilliance as a writer, um, and he was an exceptionally talented writer, but when he was in a public forum, he played uh, the same kind of game figures like Ann Coulter and others play, which means that he would interrupt you, you were never allowed to finish a point, and then he would mischaracterize what it is you were saying, uh, so that in my case, you know, he would start shouting, uh, shame on you for defending suicide bombers, something, of course, that I had not done or would ever do. Um, and I think that's because in his book and his on, uh, on, on atheism was really attacking a kind of caricature of religion, which he was comfortable dealing with. But for uh, people such as myself who come out of Harvard Divinity School and Tillich and Reinhold Niebuhr and Karl Barth, uh, that, that was uh, a kind of theological position that he wasn't prepared intellectually to confront. And so he, uh, he had to shut down any kind of real discussion. So how did that debate, how did that evening end? Well, it, it didn't go well for Hitchens. Um, uh, he, he was drinking heavily, as usual, before he went on the uh, stage. Uh, the audience was not particularly receptive, and he began flipping off the audience with his middle finger. And at the end, he, he just sort of stomped off the stage. Well, it sounds like a memorable evening. When, when did you first meet him, Chris? I met him in the 90s when I was the Balkan Bureau chief uh, covering the war in Yugoslavia. Do you remember what your first impression was? Well, I mean, Hitchens was always out for Hitchens. Um, he had a great mind, and he was an exceptionally talented writer, but I never found any moral core there. Uh, even on the left, he loved to sort of throw bombshells, you know, defending uh, the European invasion of North America and the extermination of Native Americans or suddenly deciding that he's against abortion. or uh, He loved uh, the publicity that comes with being a contrarian. And uh, remember, he began as a Trotskyite and he ended as a fervent follower of the neocons. Paul Wolfowitz became a close friend. And I think that when you have that kind of rigidity to any ideological system, uh, whether it's on the left or the right, you, you, you just replace a few words here and there and bifurcate the world into us and them, black and white, good and evil. And I think that that is a sign of, um, finally, a kind of um, a great intellectual failing, an inability to deal with nuance, ambiguity. Uh, and I think that that was part of his his deficit. Were you? Was it hard for you to accept when when he when he decided to support the war in Iraq and when he did seem to abandon the left? And was that an issue for you? No, I found him when he was on the left to be a bully. I didn't like the way he would frame debates. Uh, it always became personal, and we saw this when he switched sides and he began to tear into figures that he had once revered, Noam Chomsky. Edward Said and others, uh, and of course, part of the cruelty of that is that uh, at the time Edward was himself quite ill with cancer and, and died not long afterwards. So there was a viciousness um, that uh, was uh, very much part of his public persona on both the left and the right that always made me uncomfortable. Getting back to the question of religion, because I know this is a big question, but on a fundamental level, what do you think Hitchens got wrong about religion? Why was he so? Why was he so contemptuous of it? Well, he was contemptuous of a form of religion that I that I'm also contemptuous of. I wrote a book called American Fascists, the Christian Right, and the War in America. So I can hardly be accused of being an apologist for fundamentalist Christianity. My problem was that he substituted Western civilization and the language of scientific rationalism uh, f for uh, essentially an embrace of the divine right uh, within the Christian right to carry out imperial wars in the Middle East, that uh, he used a vocabulary, a secular vocabulary, to again bifurcate the world into these binary poles of black and white, of us and them. So his political agenda didn't stray very far from the Christian right. The Christian right wants to drop iron fragmentation bombs all over uh, the Middle East uh, because Islam is a satanic religion. He wants to do it because they're, they're barbarians. Uh, and, and my problem was that what he really promoted was a kind of secular fundamentalism. Fundamentalism is a mindset. 
it doesn't really matter what vocabulary you use to promote it. But he's been, he's he's given credit for for taking on a lot of people or a lot of the centers of power. Is there anything that you agreed on on Hitchens with? Well, he stopped taking on the centers of power uh, after 9/11. He became a cheerleader for the war and indeed trotted off to the White House to give a pep talk. When he was on the left, many of the targets, uh, including the Clintons, uh, were targets that uh, I felt were appropriate. But again, my discomfort with him was the way he attacked those targets. It always descended to the personal. It always descended to character assassination. It wasn't an actual intellectual engagement. It was an engagement meant to elevate himself as it did within popular culture. You've been quite critical of Christopher Hitchens with us this morning. Some people might be hearing this and thinking it's too soon after after his death to speak so frankly. What do you think Christopher Hitchens would say about that? Well, he wouldn't be surprised because I've said it all to his I said it all to his face while he was alive. I don't want to take away and I think I have referred to his immense talents. I think for me the tragedy of his life was that deep down inside there was a kind of amoral core. Uh, and it, much of those talents were put in the service of his own self-advancement uh, rather than, I think, to where they should have gone, uh, which is uh, against agents and systems of injustice. Chris Hedges, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you.